Hello everyone, welcome to this video for Comp3218 Computer Game Design and Development at the University of Southampton. My name is Tom Blount, I'm a lecturer on the course and I am joined here today by... Callum Sporforth. Uh, Max Heeman. Excellent. So Max, would you like to tell us a little bit about what we asked the students to do for this coursework? Yep, um, the students were asked to create a small game prototype um, with a core dynamic which is supported by game mechanics. Um, and then they were asked to create a few tutorial levels to introduce these mechanics to the players. Excellent. So let's have a look at our first game of the batch. So this is uh, this is golf puzzle, I think. All right, here we go. Okay, so we've got a, a nice simple title screen. Uh, let's let's start with the tutorial first, so we can learn how to play. So I saw this one in the expo, so I will let you guys take it away from here just to see how how much sense the tutorial makes to you. Oh, is that the ball that's spinning? No. Oh, where's the ball? Ball is so the ball is that white thing in the bottom left. Aha! Ah, right. Okay. Okay. I that is nicely hidden away. Just do it. So you have to click and drag on the mouse to. Uh, I am limited by it. So this is yeah. This is a slight problem with this. Uh, I, you can only drag the mouse to the edge of the screen, which limits the power of your first shot quite dramatically. I think that gets filed under bug. So I think I think it was, yeah. some, it was something that they knew existed, but didn't quite have time to fix. That seems fair enough. Where am I? Time to go. Uh, you can hit the box. So as you notice, the instructions on the screen have changed. So you can hit the ball whilst in midair to change the direction of speed. So now you've got to try and make that a shot while the ball is still in there. No, I, I, I confess to still being confused though. I Which of these are the things you can pass through? Cause they... Right now, nothing. They've locked you off into this tutorial sort of thing. Oh, okay. While you're completing the... So that's the thing. That massively confused me as well. I think having all of these things on the screen right from the get-go is probably a little bit confusing. And it would be nice if you just had a simple... Le like, first level is flat plane, ball, flag, get ball to flag, you've understood how it means a thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then sort of break it up with the, then sort of having to hit it in midair, which is quite tricky. But it's, it's, do I have to, that is not easy, is it? It is very difficult. So obviously when I was watching them play this in the expo, they nailed it every time, they got every single hole in one. I don't think we're going to manage that. Hole in one? Yes. Right. So the other, th uh, the other feature is once per hit, you can nudge the ball uh, left and right with Q and E, and you can nudge it up with space. Okay. So, can you do that while you're standing still, or is that only during a hit? So you technically can do it once it's on the ground, but I think it's most useful when. Okay. Right. But be careful. Here are some obstacles. See. And see now they let you out of the tutorial area. Uh, yeah, I, they really would have, I think, benefited from just doing that at separate levels to avoid just over overcomplicating the scene as much as anything. Yeah. I mean, so I think it was. I, th I think the rest of the tutorial is really nice. They have like a single instruction per sort of step and make you do it before they move on to the next one. Mm -hmm. So you have a chance to sort of learn it. And the fact that they've got this sort of really complex area, you know, gives you, uh, gives you a chance to like try out all the various bits and pieces. But you're right, mm -hmm. they didn't need to introduce all of these things right from the get-go. Oh, there you go. Remember to use your nudge if you need to. So, there you go. So you did that in 26 hits. The, the rest of the games, so if you hit start game, they have um, they have a limit on the number of uh, number of hits you can do. So, so, that's two. so that's the puzzle element of this game. Oh, that's one. There, there's one. Oh, quick, quick, nudge it. Oh, no, you see, game over. Yeah. That is quite punishing for a first level, I think. Quick, nudge it in the air. Oh, too late. It is. It is quite punishing, right? especially oh, with the screen get issue. The angle, yeah. Well, have you got it. There you go. Excellent. I quite like the little ball rolling in the hole sound effect. So they do have some nice sort of sounds here and there to sort of like emphasize what's going on, like when you hit the ball or when you hit the water. And I think almost they could have like put that tutorial instead of having a separate tutorial stage. They could have had it sort of across these levels. So like I said, the sort of first one where you've just got. Just get the ball in the hole. Yeah. Learn how to move the ball, then worry about like all the nudging and things like that. But, I mean, this if you remove the platforms, this would be an excellent first level, just with the, the basic obstacles and uh, and get over them. Um, it's just occurred to me. I'd really like to see this game played in real life. Just swipe, uh, thwack the golf ball, then you have to hit it mid air to try and like keep it up. Okay. So while uh, while Max is 
game we game we're trying to complete level two. Shall we let's have a talk about uh, the quality of the game. So yeah. we'll start with the overall presentation of it. How, how do you how you find it? So starting with just the graphics, I think the consistency of them is actually very nice. They all fit together within the sort of the same aesthetic. The background adds a little bit of business to the level without complicating the foreground. Yep. Um, and the the sound as well. It's it might be nice to have a little bit of music, but certainly the sound effects uh, are, are quite pleasant. Yeah. So if we said so, if we have a look on the mark team, satisfactory would be key information is shown, consistent graphics, some audio. Well, I think it's it's probably a little bit better than that, right? Yeah, yeah, I think so. So um, key information is shown clearly, graphics consistent. So I mean, what is the key information in this game? It's the number of shots you've got left. It's the the power the, of the your power shot. you've got, which is nicely displayed. And where you're trying to get to as well. I think the only thing I that's possibly missing from this is it would be nice to see when you've used your sort of nudge. Yeah, something like that. Yep. Yeah. So, so you don't nice. end up mashing it, and then you could even then vary the number of nudges per level, for example, if you want to. Yeah, you could do. We could be here a while. If, so I, I struggled to play this in the expo. Yeah. Like I say, they obviously did everything right. the first time because they've been playing this for three weeks. I really think they could have sort of tweaked some of the difficulty a little bit. I feel like the nudge is almost pointless because if I nudge, it just creates an acceleration which makes me slide off either way. Yeah. Well, think about where you can sort of place the shots. So maybe, you, maybe the space you, nudges, though. Yeah, maybe. Is that, is that doing anything? Um, sometimes. Okay. It might only work in the air. So, right, so what about the gameplay? Okay, uh, well, hang on, let's, let's just nail oh. down what we think about the... Sorry, I'm what, skipping what ahead. Yeah. Um, so, do you reckon, so, should we say good? I think so, yeah. So, if, 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 to do even better than that, to get to an excellent key information is shown clearly, consistent appealing graphics, good use of audio effects and music. Um, I wonder if maybe, maybe it's a satisfactory good. I, I, think, I, th I, think it, I think it nails good. Uh, it's got some audio. It's true. It sort of has all like the. I mean, the, yeah, it sort of hits all the right sort of key events in the game, I guess. It'd be nice to have maybe a little more, like you say, sort of, sort of some very simple background music or something mm. like that to sort of fill in these bits. But otherwise. Oh, whoop. has he got it? Oh! oh. Wait, did oh. you get it? No, you did get it. Oh! Fantastic. Yeah. Um, okay, so maybe something like a little fanfare there, so we know that we've got it in the hole or something. Yeah. So this one's going to be fun to watch. <laughs> Alright, so yeah, let's go for good. Let's go for good. So, okay, what about the gameplay? So, Max, you're the one playing it right now. How, how does the gameplay feel for you? Um, frustrating. Frustrating. Um, but it might just be because I'm bad. Uh, no, I think it's definitely a very unforgiving game, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. But I feel like they definitely could have been like certainly that first level where you've got mm. only two shots to get it from there. There, it's, it's it's a very simple level, but they could have. So they they said in the expo they kept the sort of the strict limit on the number of shots to sort of preserve that puzzle aspect of the game. Personally, I think I would have gone for, you know, sort of like score it like golf, right? So, yeah. like a good player will be able to do it in like two shots. But if it's the first time you've ever played it. You can still finish that level, and you can take as many shots as you want, but your score's going to suffer as, as a result. It, it also gives you the choice as a player, then, to decide how you want to play the game. Do you just want to get to the end and experience all the levels, or is it the case that you do want to get a hole in one on every single level? Exactly. And there's no harm, I think, in giving the player that choice. Um, so if we look at the criteria for gameplay, so a set of mechanics, useful controls, and some meaningful play, do you think it satisfies that? So, I, I, I think the meaningful play is an interesting place to start on that, and I think it does, particularly with the nudging, for example, because while it does vary, its usefulness does vary, it is definitely a, a meaningful choice to make within the game. Exactly, so you're deciding how to sort of position your shots so that you can make the best use of those nudges, I think that's quite good. And there's additionally, of course, like trying to figure out how you're actually going to solve the level. So positioning your ball for your second shot and your third shot, I think. Okay, so. Yeah. Um, how are the controls, Max? Um, they're a bit annoying. Like I think clicking the ball to do this, the extra hit is quite hard. Yeah. Um, and and obviously that sort of that, that sort of failure to be able to drag outside the screen definitely makes that first shot you make 
quite difficult. Oh. <laughs> the look of rage on his face when he missed that shot. Um, uh, yeah, so, okay, so, so, so they are definitely usable controls, but they could be better. Yeah, so perhaps uh, they're not as smooth as they could be. Yeah. Alright, so pre mark that down as a satisfactory. Hey! Okay, so bug wise. Um, so we had no crashes. That's so we had no crashes. Side. Obviously, there's that sort of issue with sort of dragging outside the level that sort of ties into the controls a yeah. bit. Um, but I would say, you know, there's a reasonable amount going on with this game. You've got sort of like physics and triggers to sort of say when you hit the water and things like this. It's not the most complex game in the world, mm -hmm. but I would say this is comfortably sort of somewhere between. Um, like satisfactory and good, maybe even verging on the good. So I definitely think there are there are very few bugs in here, and I think they've got the physics behaving very nicely, like you say. It behaves somewhat intuitively for a golf game, um, rather than glitching as Unity Physics is known to. Um, but I do just wonder if perhaps it's a little bit little bit simple. Um, in terms of if it, if it wants to be pushing into pushing into that good category. Um but well, maybe maybe a borderline to this. I said, Max, you can cast the deciding vote on this. What do you think? Um, so what's the question? <laughs> <laughs> Too engrossed in playing the game. Um, so uh, in terms of bug wise, there's there's not no sort of bugs we found other than that sort of dragging. Thing. But is the game sort of complex enough? Do you think to warrant being pushed um, over into the good category? It's challenging, but I'm not sure if that's because I think it's just the levels are designed hard, not necessarily the it's complex enough. If that makes sense. Because there's not much more mechanics to this, is there? Yeah, I mean there are some obstacles like the sort of moving blades and stuff that we saw earlier. But perhaps, perhaps sort of seeing some extra like little sort of bits and pieces, the types of things you find in sort of crazy golf or something yeah. like that. Maybe sort of different types of terrain that either slow your ball like a gravel trap or something that speeds it up like um, like an ice patch or something. Yeah, so like just little extra bits and pieces. Okay, that so would certainly push it over into the good level. All right, but if we so if we leave it sort of on the borderline with those two for now. Sounds good. So in terms of what we asked them to do for the brief uh, level design, how how are you finding levels, Max? Um, I think they're just harder, and I think that's just because of this screen edge thing. Um, so I can't get enough velocity because of the. It definitely um, seems like you're being hampered by the controls. Oh, there, oh there we go. That was it. Uh, yeah, good luck with this one. Um, so maybe we should talk about pacing. Yeah. So I, I mean, the pacing clearly ramps up quite fast. Mm. I think maybe it starts a little bit too challenging. But again, that might be a case of the developers have played this sort of over and over and over as they came mm. through these levels, and therefore they think these are quite easy. It goes back to that. Or, or always play test with people that haven't seen your game before as much as possible. Absolutely. Uh, also, in terms of the whole risk reward design sort of um, case, there's sort of really only one path through any of these levels, and it'd be kind of interesting to see if to see something that sort of had, for example, one path that's much longer, or one path that's sort of a shortcut to the hole, so you can get like a better score. But there's you know sort of spinning blades or something, so you don't just have to sort of find the one route through the level. You can make that choice. Precise and fast versus sort of safe, but you might run out of shots. Yeah, exactly that kind of thing. Yeah, I, I think that would have really, really been nice here because, as you say, there really is on most of these levels just the just just the one path through and the one way to solve them, um, which does take any sort of real risk reward element out of the situation. But the way they've designed the levels, they do show off all the mechanics, so you are sort of forced to use that sort of nudge and that double shot to get some mm. of these holes. So they've done that quite well. I think I would like a reset button because now I know I'm not going to be able to make the whole level. Yeah. So I have to. I'm forced to. Wait, uh, try, yeah, try pressing R or escape or something, just in case there's one somewhere in there. No. Yeah, so having a look at our mark scheme here, would you say it is a sensible level design that demonstrates a number of mechanics with good pacing and some clear goals, risk, rewards? That would be a good category. So it's tricky. So this is, again, sort of on the board, I think. The level design itself is quite good, if perhaps overly challenging, and it does make demonstrate all the mechanics, but it doesn't have that risk reward thing. Mm -hmm. So it's good on one front, but sort of maybe lacking a bit on the other. So I think particularly if we look at the satisfactory category, uh, it uses the phrasing uh, an attempt at pacing, and I think that might more accurately describe the game as well. Yeah, I think so. So let's, uh, let's put that down there. Uh, so the tutorial design. Um, I tell you what, so when, uh, when 
I, I feel something mean saying this, but when you fail this level, should we go back to the home screen? Yeah, and, should, uh, should we do that? Well, if you just sort of lose those shots, because I think we can get back to the menu from here, and we'll go through the tutorial just while we talk about it. Excellent. So, so we talked about this already the first time we saw it, but the tutorial itself is okay. We're given an instruction, we're told what to do, it won't progress until we get to the next bit. There's no limit on shots this time, so we can spend as much time as we want figuring stuff out. Mm -hmm. But you're right, there's no reason to have all of these different components on the screen right now. Even if they wanted to show us what a spinning blade is later, just have that sort of appear as if by magic when we got into that right bit of the tutorial. Absolutely. I think it's especially mean having the goal flag on the screen saying you, you're clearly to get to here and actually providing the player with no way to get to it till later in the level. Yeah, so the fact that it says reach the goal to finish the tutorial. So it is sort of almost a conflicting instruction there. Yeah. Because we, so right at the right at the start when we first played this, you were trying to get to that flag, but you couldn't because you're not meant to yet. Can you actually get there now? It looks like it's still blocked off. Interesting. So I mean, it definitely, uh, definitely got unblocked later. There you go. Ah, oh, okay. So you just have to take another shot to move to the next level. I see. Yeah. So I think one thing is, so it says drag on the ball in any direction, and I kind of do this automatically, and I can work out that's already adjusting the speed. But then it's, then it tells me, then I can adjust it. But then yeah, I kind of true. work that out from just doing that. I mean, the other thing is, right at the start, you weren't sure where the ball was, so you're sort of clicking on the thing that was shown on the screen. So perhaps sort of positioning yeah. that instruction right above the ball so you can see where you actually need to click. Yeah. So mm -hmm. uh, let's have a look at the tutorial. So a tutorial that communicates some goals, risk, rewards, and introduces some information and mechanics in a logical way. So I, I think that sums that up quite nicely. It's not as thoroughly integrated with the rest of the game as it could be. Mm. It would be nice to sort of, like you say, sort of maybe sort of show some of these things across, like just intuitively across the level, sort of like the way they're designed. Yeah. But what they've got right now is, is all right. Yeah, it definitely introduces most of the things in a logical way. It is just these uh, slight quirks that are sort of holding it back. Yeah, so I mean, so things like that sort of blade, yeah. and the fact that flag's locked off, they're sort of shown to the player a bit too early, mm -hmm. but the instructions themselves are pretty logical. Uh, okay, so in terms of core dynamics, so you've got their uh, the report we asked them to submit along with the game. So they said that the core dynamic of their game is challenge, problem solving, and puzzle. Interesting. So that is not necessarily one of the sort of core dynamics that we suggest in the lectures. What, so what do, what do they say about that? Why have they gone for Um Because I think I know what they're trying to get out there. Yes. So they say that uh, each level has a different challenge to overcome. Um, in some levels, a challenge is only to complete the level within the given shooting limit, which is the main dynamic of the game. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's sort of most of the justification for that. Okay, so that, so I, I feel like they maybe haven't quite understood what we're talking about when we say the dynamic. Mm -hmm. But if so, I mean, from what they've tried to articulate and from the gameplay itself, I'd say this is a clear example of something like spatial reasoning, right? Absolutely. You're trying to reason your way through the space presented by the level to get to the exit. Uh, and if we consider it in terms of that. I mean, it fulfills that quite well, right? It's like all of the mechanics are about getting from one side of the level to the other. Like, and the obstacles they place are there specifically to inhibit you from doing that. That was annoying choice. I'm trying to, because if I, um, when it lands on the final shot, you can nudge it after that, but it will say game over at that point. I see. So in theory, you should be able to get like a final nudge. Um, on that, then it does just it blocks it off, and you can do your nudge after that, ah, which I did notice. So you could technically just like so. I was wondering if I can get that and then complete the level after it's talking to game over. But I'd be curious about that. Keep keep trying. Um, but yeah, so if we take spatial reasoning as that dynamic, then yeah, I agree. I think it does a good job of emphasizing that mechanic. The use of the dangerous obstacles, the consideration of the path the ball has to take through the space. Uh, I like the fact that that does vary with each level and presents you a different challenge. Um, and in terms of the mechanics, I think I think it all does emphasize that. Yeah, I think the only thing that would stop it being a good is the fact that they maybe haven't sort of articulated that as well in the report. 
But then again, they, they clearly know what they're trying to do, and those mechanics are serving that goal. Oh, there you go. So, did it. And you did uh, move on to the next I game over, but then completed at the same time. Excellent. Yeah, so I, I, know, I think it may be borderline satisfactory good. Okay. Uh, okay, let's leave it at that then. Uh, and the last, last but not least, uh, the feedback. So uh, in the labs, we gave them some feedback about their game, and we asked them to tell us what that feedback was, uh, why we'd give it to them, and sort of how they'd, uh, how they'd address it. So what did they say for that feedback? So uh, the first bit of feedback was actually a completely different game. Mm -hmm. They were originally planning to build a game where you would reach the highest tower by bouncing objects, oh, but right. they so according to feedback they realised there wasn't enough mechanics um, and it would be difficult to expand. So they decided to pivot to a golf game. So the feedback they actually received on this game in the lab uh, said that the inaccuracy of the arrow, which shows the direction they're shooting in, made it hard to actually aim. So they went ahead and fixed that, and they made it was difficult for the user to hit the ball in the air. So they have made it easier to click and drag while it's in. In, in, in what way have they made it easier to click and drag? Because it looks it looks still pretty difficult. To me. Uh, let's have a look. I think maybe playing this in windowed mode would allow you to drag the mouse a bit further. Perhaps, yeah. Which is probably, may they may have tested doing that. So, they haven't exactly said how they made it easier, they just said that they haven't really made it easier. Okay. I certainly remember that during the expo, it was nigh on impossible to do. Okay, fair So, it does seem like they have somehow done that. So, it does, um, so it's always a little bit tricky to think about sort of the feedback when they change the game concept so dramatically. Mm -hmm. um, but if we say, so it's been articulated, they've implemented some changes with um, some success, because I don't think... Well, looking at this, I think uh, being able to sort of strike the ball in midair is still pretty challenging. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. However, they, if uh, if you say it's gone easier than it was, then they definitely made some attempts. So, should we mark this one down as a? Uh, Did that laugh? Nice so, one. So I couldn't. <laughs> oh, interesting. This one actually does have multiple hats. Ah, okay. Well, interesting. So we didn't quite get to. This level one we're talking. Okay, maybe that changes um, uh, what we said about the level design. Then. So, so it, it is worth noting that if you do make you choose to make your game quite difficult and then decide to put things like this quite late in the game, there is really the no no real guarantee that we will make it to it during the let's play. Yeah. So one of the things we say is we will try and play this game for like sort of five minutes. Yeah. Uh, I think it's been longer than that. It's been I think significantly longer than that. Uh, okay. So but uh, in that case, let's bump up the level two one because they. In that, in this level, they have sort of demonstrated that sort of risk reward. Yeah. Um, and lastly, uh, okay, so what we're saying for the feedback. So if we mark them down as a, I think they've made a good attempt at um, uh, addressing some of those changes. I would say there. it's been articulated. There have been some changes, and we've got partial success. I think that's a clear satisfactory. Okay. Excellent. In that case, let us move on to our next game. Excellent. This one is a uh, vault. So I think this was made by a single person, so we'll sort of bear that in mind as we're going through it. Vault, you say? Yes. Uh, ha. Okay, so this game is Vault. Uh, WASD to drive, right click to reset. Okay. So I'm immediately. Sh uh, okay. I was guessing I was immediately struck by the art style, but the. Uh... That was also pretty striking. So uh, the controls are quite hard. There's no break. Oh, is so. that was that a deliberate jump? Yes. There's no braking, but it's just like reverse acceleration. So. Okay. So does that mean you? So you can't slow down once you've accelerated. Uh, you so you know we were talking earlier about those Unity physics glitches that sometimes happen. <laughs> yeah. This is this is definitely one of them. Yes, you've got to be careful with uh, with Unity because it doesn't always decide that physics should behave like you think physics should. Ooh, okay, that's yeah, that's an interesting jump. Gems give you points. Okay, it kind of gems reminds me. Of, hang on a minute, you just missed like three gems. Can you go back and get those, or is that something you I don't can't know. do? Is there, is there for this one? It doesn't look. Like you physically can't go back Whoa, and get okay. those gems. And you're at least they gave you a checkpoint there. Eh? Yeah, that's that's something. Um, okay. But there's no real indication of when we collected a gem. Oh! oh. So are, you, are you deliberately resetting there, or is that? Um, a... No, it's doing it by itself. So they have at least considered that you can well, fly out the level. Were you supposed to get through? I don't know. 
Because um, I would have guessed you're supposed to collect those gems and then... You, you must it. have 33 gems to pass this gate. But you just passed it anyway. So since presentation is our first topic, I'd like to point out that you know that would be a really useful stat to have on the screen somewhere when you're not at the gate. Yeah, absolutely. Um, in case you, you accidentally miss a gem, don't notice. Well, and in terms of the corner. Oh, no, I'll we'll get to that later. Uh, okay, so this is looking like it is going to be a bit of a buggy game. Uh, but okay, in terms of just pure presentation... Um, so so I, I just want to say, I do actually weirdly quite like the car design. It's, just, it's, it's very simple, but the fact it's got moving wheels, it's actually quite... Yeah, I don't are, know they actually, are they actually moving? Well, move. Oh, right, that left and right. I see what you mean. Yeah. Last thing, the art style itself, I think is quite nice. Like, it's mm. very, it's very minimalist, but it's like, it's quite good. You've got yeah. those clear sort of geometric shapes. The car looks, you know, like, like a very simple toy car, but it works. Mm. The gems are sort of nice little, um, sort of, um, what's it, polyhedrons. Certainly benefit from some more coloration, maybe a uh, skybox or something, so that you're not looking at the default Unity skybox. So the only thing is, is like when you do that, your acceleration builds up. And so as soon as you, so as soon as it come, like clips off, then <laughs> okay. So, uh, so the graphics themselves. So we don't give marks just for graphics, but we do give marks yep. for the consistency of the assets. The graphics themselves are quite nice. Mm -hmm. um, there's no audio, as far as I can tell. So it would be nice if there was something sort of either when you jump or when you pick up a gem or something like that, just to sort of really highlight those uh, those different bits and pieces. Um, and it's, they're not really highlighting the key information very well. If we need to get, was it 33 gems to get through that gate? Firstly, telling us that we need 33 gems, like that was only when we sort of ran right into the gate that it told us that. And also, we don't know how many gems we've got right now. So that's that lets it down quite a bit, I think. Absolutely. I'm not convinced I, there are 33 here, because, I mean, I missed some and I won't be able to go back and get those. So if you, if you go back to the gate, can we, can we just check what it does say? Because yeah. Oh, right. I can see another maybe six on this level plus three in this. See, and it, the message isn't even showing up this time. So oh, there's a score on the bottom there. Oh, is there a score in the? I did not even notice that. So that sort of tells you that the information design. So if you drop off the end of the level, what happens? Is that is that the, the end of the game? Then? So right, I would, okay. I would guess that once, like, whatever trigger removes that gate maybe populates the end of it with something, or just triggers a, well then we've gotten through this level thing, but yeah. yeah. Okay, so there is a score in the bottom right, but again, it's still not saying, you know, 10 of 33 or anything, or it's, or it's not telling us how many we've got left still to collect. I, I think it's actually, while, while there is a score counter there, I actually think it's a fairly meaningless one, because it has no real connection back to the rest of the game. Yeah. It is just an arbitrary score counter. I mean, if it's one score per gem, sure, fine. But also, if we need gems to progress, then we need to know how many we still have to collect. Exactly. What I mean is, it's not meaningful in the context of the gameplay. Yeah, you, you need to know how many... If, if the idea of the game is that you are gating the player based on the number of gems, you need to be able to see how many of those gems you have left. That's, that's the important bit, not how many you've collected. Alright, so let's have a look at what they would need to pass just on the presentation side of things. So, some attempt at information design, consistent but poorly chosen graphics, some poorly chosen audio effects or music. So there's definitely uh, a lack of audio here. Yes, I that. So they don't have any audio at all, and it wouldn't take a lot to just sort of like just a, like a little ping when you get a gem would probably be mm. sufficient to sort of put it at that. Much. The graphics, I, I wouldn't say that they were necessarily poorly chosen. They are definitely consistent. Uh, that is true. They are very very simple though as well. This is, this is all for the most part default Unity everything. I mean that by itself is fine. Mm -hmm. That like they're consistent with what they've chosen. It's minimal. I mean. Even something like Mirror's Edge, right, has to be sort of very clear, white, clean, geometric shapes and stuff True. like that. That by itself is okay, but it's the information design that really hands this, right? The, that's what's letting it down. Well, I think those circles are worth more than the diamonds, or vice versa. I think you might be right, but... Yeah. It's not communicated that whatsoever so far. And even just visually, they're not particularly distinct. No. I mean, it, even just having the gem be quite a bit bigger, or a different colour, or something like that, because mm. right now it's just... A different floaty red block, and it's difficult to sort of make that out. And yeah. again, there's no indication when we pick it up that we've got a higher score, except for just way down in the bottom. Oh, I can't even read it now because it's in that shadow. Yeah, so I think I think some attempt at information design is probably fair. Um, I, the, I, mm. I mean, let's look. At, let's have a look at the, the, the next category down. Is information design is not sufficient? I I would. I'm um, almost saying. 
tempted to say it's not. What if we put it halfway between the two? I think halfway between the two is probably fair, because I think you're right. It's especially since the goal is unclear. Um Okay, interesting. Especially since the goal is unclear, I think you might be right. So it's still not a failing mark, but it's yeah. It's they've done just enough, I think. Like in terms of information like where they thought about putting the score on the screen, but that's kind yeah. of the limit here. Uh, okay, so gameplay wise, how how are you finding the game for the next? I feel like I'm in by the controls I'm encouraged to go fast, but going over these objects you cannot do it while going fast. You have to go you're having, you're having to be very sort of slow. Very and, slow. Slow. and every time I sort of go backwards I have to then go forwards to try and acceleration, deceleration, mm. adjust. So again, I'm I'm looking toward looking at the, um, the mark scheme. This is feeling like it's sort of, it's probably on the verge of a passing mark. So few or inconsistent mechanics, challenging controls, leading to limited meaningful play. Um, you got, you've got accelerate, slow down, turn, jump. Those are those are it's, it's it's a standard array of controls and as in a platformer, right? But yeah, platformers often have other mechanics like you know sort of enemies or like. Platforms or moving platforms or jumps or things like that. It, it could just be that we're not getting to them because yeah. the controls are quite so challenging to use. I, I think you're right. Certainly, the controls are do seem to be difficult, and there are very few mechanics here. And I mean, in terms of meaningful play, there's no, there's definitely challenge. So there is there is that, but I wouldn't say there's a huge amount of choice or risk reward here. Well, risk reward comes later in the level design. We'll true. have a look at that in a minute. Um, but yeah, I think I think we put this one down as just a passing mark. I think. All right, bugs. Well, um, so there are there are certainly some bugs. They I mean they they realise they're there because it auto resets sort of when you fly outside of the level. So charitably, you could think of it as just sort of another sort of like new state, like falling into a pit in a. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, in, a, in another platform. So the fact that you can go, the fact that you can go through the wall doesn't feel like great. There's there's also absolutely no repercussion. It's not a lose state because there's absolutely no repercussion for it to ha happening. Well, it resets you back to the last checkpoint, but but you don't lose any progress Good point. or any score. Is that going through walls or something? Yeah, yeah. yeah. and also I... getting stuck to the walls and things like that. It's, yeah, it's not intended behavior, is it? It's no, it's not game breaking as such, but it's. So if we look at pass, it says a simple game, the game is playable, but there are frequent serious bugs. And I certainly feel like it does have frequent serious bugs. Especially the fact that you can clip through the end goal. Yes, good point. I'd forgotten about that. So and it, I, this probably comes in the level design, but also the fact that you can't technically... Oh no, he is going to get 33. Actually. This is the last one. Let's see if we can get... Let's see what happens when you get that. Yeah. Wait, 33. Six. So uh, even right. though you missed three gems, it's interesting to know that... So what happens now? Can we go through it? Can I clear to enter? Yeah. Yes. Oh, I think that might be it. Let's drive off the end and see if there's any more to this. Uh, the, yeah, the wall doesn't even quite line up with the floor bit. So yeah, I think they've put enough work into mitigating the bugs that exist. Like, so if you just fell endlessly forever and you had to crash yeah. out of the game and then restart, then that would be a fail. I think the fact that they've realised that some of these things are there, even if they haven't been able to fix them, they've been able to sort of make sure they don't completely break the game. Means yeah, probably that. It does, it feels very much like an attempt to make bugs into features. Um, but yeah, I think I think that's just a, just a pass. So right. there there is a way to get it so it doesn't automatically reset. So I'm not sure what we're using. How did you achieve that? I drove at a different angle of the wall. So perhaps it's, yeah, there it's could still, be like a hitbox that you. That it's still like, this game isn't quite complex enough that it necessarily justifies. That I think maybe we have to drop it down another level then. I, th I think I, I think yeah. Let's let's talk that, about level design. So that still puts it here. So yeah. Uh, okay. So in terms of level design, um, oh, there we go. That, there we can we get a lovely view of the levels from beneath. So uh, let's point out something good. The fact that even though Max missed those first three gems, I assume you didn't get those gems, Max. Right? So uh, it, no. it is also worth pointing out actually. Uh, this so this game was made by a single person. So we do have to. Uh, What's the word? Take that into account when we're sort of looking at some of the complexity on display here. Absolutely. Okay. Um, but in terms of level design, I do like the fact that there are sufficient points in this area, despite the fact that Maximus three gems. Yeah. So it had those sort of initial ones to sort of show you, but then it made sure all of the important ones were still reachable. The difficulty curve perhaps has been a little bit severe. Um, I think that's possibly emphasised by the difficult controls. 
Right, do you want to um, quit out of this and sort of go back to the beginning just so we can uh, have a look at that tutorial? I'll just make a note of that here. Yeah, so I think, I think it has a decent enough sort of initial pacing with some fairly linear levels and some basic introductions to jumping. Um, but it does really quite ramp up, particularly with the sort of sudden emphasis on very precise platforming. But then again, it do, it's forgiving still. So if you you know you fall off that like that thin bridge or something where you don't quite make a jump, you just go back and try again. You don't immediately lose the game, so it's it ramps up the challenge, but you still have that safety net. Very true, though. I am not entirely certain how I feel about that because of the fact that there isn't a way to lose the game. I, I think that's perfectly fine, but at the same time, it does take away some of that element of risk. So I think here it's just frozen. Um, so if we if we look at the satisfactory, okay, maybe we might have to quit out that one as well. So again, so there are a couple of game breaks yeah. on both of them. Um, uh, so if you look at satisfactory for the level design, a sensible level design that demonstrates some of the mechanics with an attempt at pacing and some goals, risk rewards. So again, it's lacking in that goals, risk reward thing. Yep. Um, but the level design itself, it's again the the mechanics are a bit minimal. There's you you can move, you can jump, you can collect the things. Mm -hmm. But it does try and lay out some interesting challenges to sort of to make you show different skills when you try and get go to those gems. So I I'd say it's probably satisfactory for level design. Um, this is a bug. So I'm uh, this is an interesting bug. So I'm, I'm sort of stuck on the whole goals, risks, reward thing, because I think the goal was decidedly unclear, though there is technically one to get through the barrier, but then it doesn't go anywhere. Yeah. Um, it's not a... So it wouldn't take it a little bit... It would only take a little bit of extra scripting to say, instead of removing that door, just say, you know, pop yeah. up, you win. No, I mean... Alright, stop, stop by me. Well, I can't, it's... it's... Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. well, uh, let's restart. Crash out of it and we'll get back into it. Because um, that's, that's making me nauseous. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I think, and I think, I suppose the, the gems themselves are actually, they're bright red, they are clearly highlighted as the goals. I suppose maybe, maybe it has got goals, just no risk reward. Alright, let's, let's call that satisfactory and then move on to the tutorial design. Okay. So it has introduced me to use WS and D and right click to reset. Um, and then when we get to the jump, there is another trigger. Reset. So again, it's one of these cases where it does introduce all the different mechanics sort of okay. Again, the information design is kind of the problem. The tutorial message is way, way up there at the top. It doesn't really... So it does tell me I got a checkpoint and gems give me points here. Yeah. But it's certainly not um, striking to the eye, right? It's very yeah. difficult to see. It's also fairly so short-lived as well. It's very odd that there's that sort of um, sort of pit, the death pit there that you have to jump over. Yeah. And then there's no other, like, there's no other death pits here. Yeah. yeah. But it does make you prove that you can jump before you can get into the, the, the real meat of the game, I suppose. Yeah, that is true. So, I, I think it does communicate all of the core elements of the game at some point. Ex except perhaps the goal. So it does say pick up the gems, but I don't think it makes it clear that the gate opens. It says the gems give you points, but it doesn't say you have to collect all of the gems. Yeah. And in fact, the first time we went through it, we didn't collect all of them. We just sort of drove straight past them and landed in this main game path. And then it, yeah, and the fact that it only tells us the goal when we bumped up against that door in one particular spot. So one thing that it does do quite nicely, though, is it does use the, definitely use the level to force the player to at least use the mechanics before that they can progress. Yeah. For example, you can't jump over those till you've mastered, or at least got the hang of using space to jump. You and have to get over the death pit subsequently to get to this stage. And this stage definitely requires, I'd probably say, close to mastery of jumping in this game to actually yeah. get past. Yeah, the, the difficulty curve is quite steep. So, so I, I, would, I would be tempted to call this, like, this, this is a satisfactory tutorial. It's simple, the information design isn't great, but we've highlighted that previously when we're talking about the, the quality of the game itself. Mm -hmm. So I think the tutorial itself is probably satisfactory for game this nature. I, I think so. I think why you say the information design is, la is definitely lacking, but I think it does make up for it in the way it uses the level. Okay, core dynamic. What, uh, what do they say for this core dynamic? So the core dynamic for this game is collection. Okay, that's uh, the game's structured around collecting gems, completing parts of the level in order to find more gems, and progress to the next section. Um, it has an element of exploration, as the player must find all the areas where gems are before completing them. I, I think that's probably a bit of a stretch. It, exploration is more about sort of, you know, a source of wonder coming from sort of the thing that you're seeing, and sort of you're exploring for exploration's sake. This, I mean, this is definitely clearly a collection game. Absolutely. 
Um, so they've definitely chosen the right sort of core mechanic for it. In terms of uh, so so these round gems, you think are worth more points, or are they worth the same amount? Uh, pick a look at them. So that's Twenty-five a goes to thirty, so it's so they are worth five points. And, and that, that put, isn't communicated anywhere. So it's not. And again, this is information design which we've spoken about already. But they put. They seem to put that. Oh, okay, I was going to say they put that in the trickiest spot in the middle of that bridge. But then yeah. there's another one here. Yeah, and so, then we have thirty-six points. Okay. So, okay. Um, yeah. So, so for a satisfactory, it would be a core dynamic that is a poor match for the theme of the game, or is supported by only some of the mechanics and audiovisual choices. So I would say, yeah, it's. In terms of the dynamic itself, it's a reasonable dynamic. It yeah. sort of fits what they're doing and it fits the mechanics. It's sort of, again those sort of audio visuals and the information design. There's no there's mm -hmm. no incentive to collect these gems. Even in the tutorial that says they give you points, but it doesn't say your goal is to go and collect all of these gems. I'd I'd also wonder if to some extent the choice of controls and the car are possibly at odds with the collection mechanic. Um, perhaps. Um, I would expect, you know, so not necessarily in a collection game. I can absolutely see a, for example, a very fast-paced collection game in which the oh, aim is to, to, to progress to the level at a rate and get, you know, say, a minimum of five gems per ten seconds, otherwise the game fails. Um, whereas in contrast, this is actually a very, very slow-paced, a very, very precision platforming game. And I think to some extent that the is an interesting choice against. with the controls. Um, it does feel a little bit at odds with what I'd usually expect from a from, from a game of that style. Should we um, should we call that satisfactory and have a look at the feedback? Uh, yes. Yeah. That's yeah. Good. <clears throat> so what what uh, what did they say about the feedback we gave them? So they said that they received uh, three pieces of feedback in the first lab. Uh, the considering placement of gems, pick up items to guide the player, the addition of checkpoints. And hazards to the player. Interesting. So the first two they've very clearly implemented. They use those gems to sort of lay out the route they want the player to take. Although it is the only route, really. That is true. There's, there's not exactly a wide variety of space to explore. Yeah. Um, they said they deliberately chose to make the gems brightly coloured to make them stand out against the rest of the world. That's true. Um, and they were placed to highlight the different paths or the player would take or to say that they have to go in those particular directions. So this thing, I don't think there are different paths. Mm. No. You have to go through all of those things to unlock the exit. Yeah. Um, okay, what about the, what was the last? The so, last hazards to the player. They said there was only a single hazard, uh, a jump over a gap which resets the player if failed. Uh, they said they could have explored it further with longer sections um, where any fall will result in reset to the last checkpoint. It was considered whether to reset any gems collected since the last checkpoint, and this was not implemented because it may result in angering the player, um, especially if they've not made, especially if they're very near the end of the section. So that is something you highlighted earlier. Uh, so it's good to know that that was a conscious choice they made. Mm -hmm. um, so if you look at the feedback score, so feedback was uh, was articulated, and some changes have been attempted with partial success. That would be for satisfactory. I think again that that probably nails it on the head. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, get, I think. So again, sort of to take some of that feedback further, if they'd have made the gems different colours based on their yeah. value, or again given some more feedback that that it's the player like it's the goal to go and collect them, that was really what was needed. But mm -hmm. from from what they've they've definitely made a go at implementing some of the changes we asked for, and I think overall that has improved the quality of the game they submitted. Definitely. Yes, yes. Okay, uh let's let's move on to our last game for this batch. Right. Okay, so our last game of this match is Way Out. Okay, we've got a nice simple title screen. Okay, oh, cool. here we go. We... Right, so let's have a look at the tutorial at the top. Okay, I'm going to have to squint for that because that's extremely small. Last movement, shift, run, you need to reach the other side of the maze, press enter to continue. Okay, let's press enter to continue. The other enter? Yeah, other enter. Okay, and um, so does that just remove the prompt? Yeah. Okay, well, at least it's explicit that you, know, you have to decide to close that, but it'd be nice if it said press enter to, to yeah. clear this message or something, because I thought there'd be another bit to this tutorial. Yeah. yeah. Um, I do like how the camera kind of moves as it's attached to his I, like, torso. I think we've seen this um, this asset in previous years. You are walking very slowly. <laughs> Let's oh, shift, a shift to sprint. Yeah. I do. Whoa. Whoa, hang on. When you reach a dead end, you will be... What? Why? 
When you reach a dead end, you'll be spawned in a new location in the maze. You need to learn the maze inside out to reach the end. But if you're changing my location every time I hit a dead end, how I, on earth am I supposed to learn it? Yeah, that is true. And I think, and I didn't even see it was a dead end before. What is this green path as well that we're following? There's, I don't. I is that the correct route, or is that our last path, or is that? I don't recognize this way I've been before. So, so this is something that no, 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 no don't, don't go to the dead end. Oh, no, but this one's not going to trigger it, is it? Is it not? That's a dead end, technically, but... Okay, so that one didn't trigger. So, hit enter again. Let's just see if there is another message for us to see. So, you saw this game in the expo, Callum. Uh, and I remember something you saying at the time was, they say they've got to... You've got to learn this maze inside and out mm -hmm. to defeat it. But... So I think... But it's very featureless. There's nothing exactly to learn here, right? Very There's much so. Memorable. I feel like if, you want to, if the aim of the game is for the player to learn the terrain then you need something distinct, like landmarks, or something for the player to actually orientate themselves what, to. Sorry, what, what, what did you just do there? I pushed space while running, and it apparently does that. So there's a jump in it. So I remember talking about it's in the expo, and it's in there because it's in there. Because it's just part of the asset. Pretty much. Yeah, okay. Um, so I vaguely recall them talking about the green path a little bit. They said it's something like guides you towards the exit. I have no idea. Try following the green path, Max. I'm oh, sorry, we've lost the green path now. That's oh, true. Okay. But if it guides you towards the exit, why wouldn't you just follow the green path and then there's no game? I don't know. I think it's I think it's certainly unclear in the information is exactly what that green path is doing. So one problem I definitely have with this is there is no maybe maybe we should wait till gameplay for this, but there is just no meaningful choice when you take a left or a right at these these okay. turns. Yeah, I'm so, doing it arbitrarily randomly. Like, there's no there's no hint or message or anything to indicate which way you should go. And that's absolutely compounded by um, being teleported to a new place. So the, absolutely. the one choice you can sort of make in a maze to know that you'll get to the, it's, you know, the left hand draw. You always keep your left hand on a wall and you follow that wall until you get to the end. And I assume that's why they put in this teleport thing, to make sure you can't just always do that. But in which case, you're not making any decisions, you're just... Mm. you're making random choices. Yeah, it's it's certainly a strange choice. So, should we start by talking about presentation? Yeah, let's let's kick off by talking about the presentation of it. Um, so again, it's a very sort of simplistic art style. It's mm -hmm. you know sort of quite cl clean, clear, minimal, and overall that would be okay, except for like you say, there's no landmarks or any inherent features for us to get our bearings in this maze. If, for example, there was you know a room somewhere in this maze with, well, even just if there was a room in the maze, but if it had like you know a statue of something in it. Then if we pass that again, then we could say, okay, now I know where I am, I'm at this point. Yeah, exactly. And if they, there was a different room with a different statue elsewhere, then again, we could start learning mm. roughly where we are. But again, I'm sort of spilling over into talking about gameplay again. Yeah. But it, all, it also comes down to sort of the, the sort of information design. But so, so what is the key information in this game to talk about information design? I guess sort of the route through the... I mean, it's difficult to say. The route through the maze is obviously sort of being highlighted with this green path somehow, but... It's not clear what that is, it's not explained in the tutorial, mm. and if it is just the route to the exit, then they've removed the gameplay, right? Because it's just follow the green. Uh, okay, but it, just, in, just in terms of presentation, but I, I keep getting ahead of myself. So the, the maze itself is very sort of clean and minimal. The sort of chunky, bobbly character is a little bit, you know... It's a little bit at odds with the maze. Yeah, it doesn't quite, or at least... Like if they were in, you know, sort of like a cartoony fan fantasy-ish, like hedge hedge maze or something like that, that would sort of fit fit the character better. Ooh, what's that? Is that the exit? Or is that the place where I started and I got teleported away from? I don't know. Run into it and see. Ah, okay. So we are we've escaped the maze. And the so, and so they've said that there will be a winning gesture and a message displayed in the uh, in what they've written. So perhaps that was the entrance. If you turn around now, what do you see? Yeah. Yeah, so that, that was the entrance. Okay, so you were following the green line backwards. Yeah. Right, so oh, follow the so green line forwards this time. A fun adventure. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, but in terms of audio, no, there, isn't. There, there isn't any in terms of graphics. There's not a lot going on. Not really. Um, Everything looks the same. So is that, a, is that a sum attempt at information design with consistent but poorly chosen graphics? Or is it information design is not sufficient? With inconsistency. It's very that. difficult to say because the information design sort of ties into the ties very much into the gameplay. Yeah. 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 I would say 
Uh, I'd say maybe it's between the two of those. So maybe just below. Maybe, yeah, maybe between uh, poor and a poor pass. And a pass. Okay. Because, that. yeah. It, it is very, certainly very difficult to determine. Okay. So, gameplay. I'm not thinking about it at all. So, gameplay, a, a pass would be fewer inconsistent mechanics, challenging controls, leading to limited meaningful play. So, in terms of mechanics, um, there's definitely not a lot going on here. There's, there's uh, the maze, there's a mysterious green line, and there is movement, essentially. But, and, and there is a jump, which again is sort of... Useless. I'm, I'm almost not including that in the mechanics because it just doesn't serve a purpose for the game. I, I would almost sort of mention it because of that. If it's, right. if they're including something that doesn't serve their game, why is it included? And I, I know the reason for that is because it was bundled with this asset. But still, I, I either take it out or find a different character controller that doesn't have this thing that you don't need. Right. No. Uh, and for that matter, why is there a sprint button, right? Like, Max, have you taken your finger off the sprint button? I haven't taken my finger off the W or the sprint button. Exactly. So there's no reason that your character shouldn't always be sprinting in this. Mm. I, so actually the mechanics do are, are, are inconsistent, and they do actually work partly, if not against the game, they're yeah. certainly superfluous to, to what you need. So I would... I think I would put this towards the poor end of the gameplay. I think, I think interestingly for um, poor, it also says there is very little meaningful play. And, and that's, I think, that's, I think, the, the big problem. Yeah. That. There is... Is that the entrance or the exit now, oh, Please don't say this is the... Uh, yeah, the yeah. end, well done. Um, okay, there we go. This is a celebration. Or something. Uh, I think that's this up here in the top. If you squint, you can just about see in the top left corner. I wouldn't you reach say. the end. I wouldn't say. Jump, jump off the edge anyway. Celebration. Let's I celebrate by hurling ourselves. So I can't be backwards now. Ah. So I can turn by going forwards and then. Well, can you can you jump so up? So I'm actually fairly sure S does not work in this game. I do not believe you can go back. Okay. At all. Um, you can only jump while sprinting, and you can't jump particularly high. Either. It's 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 very. Um, I mean, is there is there no meaningful play? I just followed the line. I don't think there is, no. Um, unusable, unusable control. I mean, S is unusable, but it's not. You can traverse the maze, which I think is the... So you can traverse through the maze. So the controls are usable, but there are certainly some things in there that are pointless. I, I, think, I'm gonna, I think I'd have to put this personally between poor and absent, just because I, I can't see essentially the game within this. There's no... So uh, just hypothetically, what would it take to make this a game? If if you have a timer, would that so, so let's stick with their core um, their core idea here of you, you want to learn, you the maze. To learn the maze. So I think I think some sort of landmarks. And just to bring up their core dynamic, the first thing they name is exploration. And if they do want that to be their core dynamic, you need a sense of wonder and discovery. And I think that's probably what the maze is missing. All right. Oh, in that case, I think you're right. This does fall somewhere between the maps and the four. Um, in terms of bugs. Um, it's certainly very simple, which makes it hard to... I mean, it's sort of just falling off the end of the world a bug, I would say it probably is. Yeah, the fact I think that, so. I mean, the fact that you can turn around, like, as soon as you load into the game, you can turn around and just fall out forever. Yeah. You know, like, there, there doesn't need to be a hole there, right? There could just be a wall that says, this is the entrance. Yeah. And the, the fact that you can't go backwards, despite the fact it tells you you can, I don't know if that's a bug or an issue with the tutorial. And again, the rest of the game is just quite simple. There's not a lot of complexity here for things to go wrong. And the, the teleporting is almost a punishment, because if I'd have discovered the dead end on my own, I could go back. But now I get ported in the middle, where I don't know where I am. And if I find the green line, I don't know which way I'm following. So I would yeah, just yeah. go back to the So did you just have to follow the green line to get to the end? I followed the green line. Okay, so it's even though it's a maze, it's actually a perfectly linear path. Yeah. Um... Perhaps it perhaps it scrapes. So a pass would be a simple game. It's playable, but there are frequent serious bugs. And four would be a very simple game. The game runs, but serious bugs make the end. So I, I don't think it is that. I think it's it's definitely a pass. Yeah, it is. It is very simple. You can play through it in so much as the gameplay that there is there. But there's nothing other than sort of falling off the end of the world, either at the very start or the very end, that prevents you from doing that. So yeah. I think this is probably a pass in terms of bugs. Right. So right. if we move on to uh, the brief itself. Um, not the level design next, or that is that is the brief. Ah, of course. Um, so, um, so in terms of level design pacing, 
there, there isn't a great deal because the maze is, as far as I can tell, all elements of the maze are, you know, the same. Particularly when you get teleported around them, if you get teleported to a random place, yeah. it doesn't feel any different, right? It's always the same level of just, you know, follow, I, find the green line, follow the green line. And I got teleported to another dead end, which didn't doesn't really add anything. I think we've got to consider as well how the level design in this case does demonstrate mechanics, but also I think the core dynamic ties in here with the level design. Uh, since they have named exploration, yeah, I th I th yes, to an it's, extent, it, it, it's it's difficult to distinguish between the two. I think, but I think we certainly have to take it, you know exploration into consideration there. It does say you need to learn the maze inside out, which we know for a fact you don't. So if we start with let's let's just uh, have a look at pass on the map scheme and see and see where we feel sort of which side of that it lands. So a level design that demonstrates some of the mechanics, poorly balanced or paced. Uh, and with lack of clarity over goals, risks, rewards. It may hit that. So if it was lower than that, it would be poor level design does not demonstrate the mechanics adequately, it's poorly balanced and paced with lack of clarity over it. It's, it's very hard to say due to the notable lack of mechanics, really. That is true. I th and the thing is, yeah, those mechanics don't necessarily lead into, again, meaningful gameplay, like the jump yeah. or the sprint or things mm. like that. But anything the tutorial telling you you need to discover the maze just works completely against you winning. If, because I get more confused. Yeah. Um, so perhaps we. Yeah. So perhaps this is poor, or perhaps it's between a pass and a four? Um, I, I, I think it's got to go. I, I think we've got to put it between. Okay, I think that's fair. It, it, again, just just with the lack of mechanics, it is it is very difficult to say um, because it's unclear exactly what the level design is trying to emphasize. I mean, there's there's no real pacing, there's no real risk and reward, there's no clear goal mm -hmm. other than get to the end, and that's mostly sort of haphazard chance. There's no again, sort of ties into what we were saying about the gameplay. If they'd have put some features or landmarks or something that you could use to get your bearings within the level, mm -hmm. that would massively improve the design of the level. Yeah. Okay, tutorial design. So, again, a very, very simple tutorial that says at the start, here are, here are the controls. But again, there's not enough mechanics and there's not enough depth to the gameplay itself to sort of have, to have anything meaningful to explain to the player. Mm. Uh, and even some of the things that are in here, like this green line, doesn't explain. I, I'd also emphasize that the tutorial itself did say, you know, WASD and S doesn't work. Yeah. So it, 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 it's, it, it's actually, to, the, to a small extent, slightly misleading as a tutorial. I, so it's... Were you that close to the end? I no, I got to the end. It said you reached the end, and I turned left on about two meters, and it teleported me somewhere else and said, you need to learn the maids inside out, good luck. So otherwise, so some good things about the tutorial, they have these contextual prompts that show up when they mm -hmm. become relevant. They let the player clear them when they need to. So those elements of it are good. Again, it's just sort of the lack of complexity for this one, I think. Yeah. So if we have a look at tutorial design, so uh, pass would be a tutorial that communicates some goals, risk, rewards, and introduces some information and mechanics in a logical way. I think that's probably fair, actually. Um, it, the goals that are there. So so, so lower than that, Paul would be um, it introduces those mechanics, but not necessarily in a logical way, and it does do that. It sort of introduces them as they're needed. The problem is again, mm. there's just not enough of them. It's too simple. There's not enough to to to, to, to tutorialize to the player. I think it's a. Well, I think it might be again, another line. 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 Right, Max, what do you think? Yeah, I kind of agree with that. All right, let's pop that one down there. So the core dynamic you mentioned was exploration. So they've specifically said uh, the core dynamics of our game include exploration, matching, and solution. Sorry, say that again? Uh, okay. I don't know what they mean by matching and solution. No. Um, exploration, okay, fine. It's you know about sort of exploring, it's about discovery. But again, there's no... Exploring a, a blank maze is not valuable exploration. So I would go to say the mechanics and or audio visual choices detract from the attempted core dynamic. Uh, I think we have to say that. There is no I mean, there is no element of exploration really. That means. It, it, it's almost like so if we were looking at on the mark scheme, absent would be almost no serious attempt at development core mechanic. I so I think they've made an attempt. It's a maze, mazes are about exploration. 
But the fact that they leave, they put the path through the maze for you, so there's no need for exploration, and the mm. fact that there is nothing to explore makes me think maybe it is somewhere between the absent and poor. Mm. Right, I think so. It just it it doesn't have that that real sense of discovery, that sense of wonder, that sense of uh, of any satisfaction that we you would get from sort of associated with an exploration game. There's there's no way to find a, like an interesting mm. new area because there are no new areas. It's all just sets of corridors, and when you get mm -hmm. to the dead end of one, you get put somewhere else. Um, okay, feedback wise, what did uh... so they said uh, the initial version of the game did not have any texture sprites or animations, and it was just that they add some. Okay, that's um, usable. And it, the, what they did to solve that was they added textures for both the character and the map, and added a walking animation for the player. Okay. I mean, so I say they also said there was a lack of a basic tutorial for the player. Um, so they added well the tutorial you can see here. Uh, so the pop-up text to explain and present the game. And they said the final piece of feedback was that the first version felt very slow and took a long time to traverse the maze. So they resolve this by speeding up the pace of the player and putting in the run sprint. If if they sped up this by default, that must have been slow before. Yeah. But also, again, there's no reason to be able to switch between those two modes. So, no. so it feels like they made an attempt to address some of these. It feels like... Mm -hmm. So c certainly I think they've done a nice job adding the animations and things. Yeah, uh, that's true. I, I, I dread to think, you know... If it was just a blank... If it was just... Just, just, yeah. But again, that's like, yeah, I sp yeah, yeah. But I would have thought the adding textures to the map would add to that level of you can recognize things. But there, I, there are no textures on the map. So that's yeah, that's what I was thinking. Really, if they'd have had, you know, even if they'd had sort of the the map broken up into four sections, and each section had a different type of texture. So one sort of you know very metal mm -hmm. walls, and one sort of these very sort of plain white walls, and one's a dirty brick wall texture or something like that. Even mm -hmm. that would give you some sort of some point of reference. So I think so I think they've they've um, done their best to address the feedback they were given. They have made some attempt uh, and some progress and I think it has improved the game as a result, but perhaps not quite as much as like it could have been. So I can put that down as uh, as pass satisfactory. Um I I I will pass I think because I think limited success is accurate and I, especially since I feel like things like some kind of texture and a tutorial are some more core elements for this. Uh, yeah, particularly the tutorial. That's yeah, yeah. Like I, I'm, I'm just very apprehensive about saying you know it's it's worth marks to say we didn't have a tutorial, so let's add a tutorial, given that it's a, a yeah. core aspect of this particular spread. Okay, so that I think brings us to the end of uh, of this game and of this uh, video. So thank you very much for watching, uh, and we will see you again for another video soon. Thank you.